with different things. Yeah, futuric. But this looks pretty cool. Um, and this article goes through various other um, simulations that people are running just to do simple things like uh, there's this guy um, who's been simulating the 7.5 million inhabitants of Switzerland and basically just looking at their um, their travel activities to work out you know um, what they can do to mitigate traffic and congestion and all that sort of stuff. But um, cool. so they put all that data into this. Into, the into a supercomputer. I'm guessing they just run like an incredible amount of simulations and just to see what happens. Just to see what, yeah, to see yeah. what data they can just keep on pulling it in. That's cool. It must be like a brute force thing that's just like, mm. just throw this at it and just you know see what happens. Just but, to um, get them all interlinking far out. Yeah, I don't know how they do it, but be cool to I follow. mean, they're scientists. We're not meant to know. Scientists <laughs> <laughs> say. That's how it works, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, what they're gonna do is uh, just mine a whole bunch of data. Um, yeah, on just social, economic, and environmental processes and all this crazy stuff. I'm guessing just as much data as they can possibly get their mm. hands on. And just chuck it in into regards to how the earth works. Yeah, throw it in and see what happens. What, what are their outcomes? What are they hoping to do with it? Well, I highlighted that actually. Yeah. Now you say it. Uh, in a practical sense, the scientists behind the Futurix project foresee the development of crises observatories and decision support systems for politicians and business leaders. That's kind of cool. So basically what they're trying to do is, if they can get this simulation working quite well, they could, I guess, apply that to... monsters in the system. <laughs> no. Sin City 2 style. <laughs> yeah, yeah what, if, what if a giant beam comes down or like, yeah. aliens invade? Let's just say hypothetically, we <laughs> nuke New York. Jeez. <laughs> oh, you'd want to know, that is actually good. I'm not advocating nuke New York. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not saying you should be under the bridge at this time and you'll be able to, <laughs> yeah, You'll have a perfect view into the president's office. You, you know, if you take a sniper there. I can't say that. Totally I'm illegal. Say totally illegal. <laughs> that Why is Kid You Know? Yeah. It's a good show. Awesome. Um, but yeah, what they're saying with this is they could actually, um, it, you know, detect different warning signs and what could possibly happen well in advance. That's cool. And then come up with different scenarios on how to, you know, mitigate that, that issue. Hmm. Um, but what I actually wanted to talk about with that too is... My little sticky notebook open. Um, yeah, what Google's actually done, and this was mentioned a while back now, but this links in very well, is Google has $26.5 billion of assets in cash, like a ridiculous amount of money for a company. I don't know how much that is. And I'm pretty sure they're just at the moment, they're just like, oh, what, we don't know what to do with it, just grow it. So what they've actually got is they've set up their own freaking trading floor. So they're, they're setting up their own equity fund where they invest in just random stocks and whatever they want to invest in to grow their money. Mm -hmm. And they have, actually, at the moment, they have 30 um, financial professionals from, you know, Morgan, Chase, and JP Morgan, and all the big Great ones, yeah. T Group, and all those guys. But I, I read that a while ago, and I was like, oh yeah, cool, that's, that's awesome. But yeah. then I read a, another recent article that actually said, imagine if Google combined their search data with their financial data to predict where the market's going. <laughs> That's just awesome. That's the killer thing yeah. right there. And I would not be surprised if they're already <laughs> doing that, just not telling anyone. Oh, they have to be. They so yeah. have to be doing that. Because there have been stories about them before Jeez. of using um, just simple things like using their search um, inputs to detect where the flu is and where it's yeah where it's spreading. Like even the, um, what's the big one that broke out? The, the bird flu. H1. Avian flu. Yeah, avian flu. Or H1N1. What's up? That was the was same thing, thing, I think, wasn't yeah. it? Was the exact same. I don't know. But yeah, if they do that, like it, it wouldn't be difficult. Like... They already have all their search data, that they're getting billions and billions of searches yeah. per day. They already have the financial data, it's just a matter of linking them up and seeing any and patterns They have emerge. it before everyone else. Like, if they actually just yeah. can't start seeing what the collective mass is typing into this box, into yeah. that search, like, damn, they can actually say, oh look, someone's searching a lot for this, therefore these stocks are they going can, up. Yeah, they and they can cross-reference it. Yeah. God damn. Predict where the market's going to go. And I, I, I've had a feeling this is what the big banks are doing that we just don't know about. I think they're very conspiracy esque, but I mean, it's if all be. if all the money and all the financial transactions, or a majority of the fan financial transactions flow through the big banks, mm -hmm. then they know pretty much where the money is flowing in the economy. Yeah. If you know where the money is flowing in the economy, you know where it will be tomorrow. Mm. You so, know where it'll be playing. Yeah. That's why it comes down to just a few big people. So, yeah. That's why the simulation, like simulating stuff and actually being able to predict it, is very big. Links into that actually. Yeah. Back. Were you going to talk about that? I was. Let's throw a flash up. Yeah. What was I talking about? That? Oh, the galaxies. Were you doing yeah. that? I'll do the talk about the galaxies now. Because it links in, because it's. It does, yeah, simulating. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's it. Well, uh, that links into this one, which is. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> segue, segue, segue. Dun dun dun. Is uh, analyzing galaxies. Uh, they've got AIs that are now analyzing galaxies. That's the short of it, and 
It is awesome because we've got all this data, like the millions upon millions of millions of galaxies out there. And now they've just decided that, well, instead of just getting humans to do it, they've now written this program, which does it with 90% effect, uh, effectiveness to actually classify all the galaxies out there and all these other like scientific observations and stuff. And the very, the awesome thing about it, it can actually um, create like new, new ideas for it and not uh, new observations. That's, that's the main thing because they can get like a few different... Uh, keys put in by like humans saying that oh this 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 okay, they yeah. need a few actual observations by humans and then yeah then they can say oh okay cool we'll classify all of that and yeah it's just awesome because uh, they're automating science all of the science observation all of this is just being done and it's, automatically it's, and it's using um, the data from collaborations isn't it I think so yeah which is I think it was a thing called Galaxy Zoo which I haven't played with mm. before but I think I checked it out once but that's where all of the yeah where all of the galaxies are put. <laughs> Man can actually, well, yeah, yeah, analyze galaxies and analyze everything. <laughs> but I mean, uh, there's a great quote. This is found on Singularity How, but um, the final sentence I just think is great, which is automation and science best feedback loop ever. <laughs> so true. Yeah. And it's happening, like they're saying uh, later on in this day with um, all genome sequencing and all of that, that we've just got these massive data heavy, well, science yeah. at the moment that if we can just create some basic things out there. Yeah. I mean, analyzing all the millions of galaxies out there, I think is kind of worthwhile. That'd be kind of nice. Especially if they make it online. I'd like to have like, a universal maps. map of where it yeah. is. Yeah, and what the galaxies what are, they, are made up of. How do they map it though? Do they have like a 3D sort of longitude, latitude and Yeah, I don't know. Something? I think they've got all different and, and classifications of galaxies. It almost needs like a five-dimensional or four-dimensional. Well, I'm, I'm not sure if they're actually plotting. Oh, they'd have to plot where it is. But I think it's more about what it's mm. composed of and what type of galaxy and stuff. Yeah. And then, so that's kind of cool. How cool would that be? Google Universe. <laughs> oh, yeah. You zoom in, you oh, see everything yeah. in. In real time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could do it with... I mean, well, like, we look really at the... Um, <laughs> you look at the computational power now that, I mean, this would be fine in, like, say, about 10 years, 10, 20 years. Yeah. You look at the... If Moore's laws continue, if Moore's law continues, then, yeah, sure. You can just compute it on the fly. We'll have all the stars, everything in the universe just mapped. That's kind of cool. Like, that's the end game of this, is that you can look at any star, look at anything, and have it totally mapped, have all of the... You know what its composition is, you know how far away it is. Well, can we see everything? I don't think we can. We can't, no. But no. what we can see, and then it's just about pushing the limits there, because then anything we can see, we've got it mapped. Very cool. Yeah. Every stop. It's pretty nice. I'd like that. <laughs> I can point my uh, phone at it instead of just getting the constellations. I'd like, tell me about that stuff. <laughs> oh, it's made of hydrogen. Who would have thought? 